Of Ozzie Nelson. And of course, his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. very convincing. Something wrong? Life overwhelms me. <laughs> it's all right. Life overwhelms me, too, sometimes. What's your particular problem? It's just that it's a man's world. Are you just finding that out? I suspected it for some time now. Well, never mind. You'll be a big man someday. Promises. That's all I get. Promises. What's this about promises? Oh, your small son has just realized a few of the disadvantages of being a small son. Oh, what's happened all of a sudden, Rick? Oh, heck, it's a man's world. Well, yeah, I guess it is at that. What's your big complaint? Well, Iggy Schwartz and I wanted to go to the movies this afternoon. Well, why didn't you go? They wouldn't let us in. It's set for adults only. <laughs> but too bad. It looked like a great picture, too. Oh, it did, did it? Yeah, and it had some pictures outside the theater. They wouldn't even let us look at those. <laughs> And you missed very much. Then we wanted to help some guys move a house. They wouldn't let us. Didn't have your union card, huh? No, they said we were too little. Well, you probably were. It's not our fault. I'll probably always be a little boy. People will always be saying, sorry, Sonny, you're too small. Sorry, little fella, you're too little. I'm too little. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry. One of these days, you'll be a great big fella. By that time, I'll be a little old man. <laughs> know all this talk about being a little boy. When you get past 13, you're getting along, you know. Heck yes, you're practically middle-aged. Then why don't people treat me that way? And what's your complaint? Why can't I stay up late at night? Oh, because you're too little. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a swell picture on television tonight. Oh, I don't know, Ricky. Those movies run awfully late. Well, uh, just a second, Harriet. Maybe it'd be okay if he stayed up to see the late show just this one night. Well, I don't care. Whatever you say. Oh, boy, thanks, Pa. And there's a swell movie tomorrow night, too. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to find a whole week's schedule for all the late movies. <laughs> Do you think that's wise, letting him stay up late like that? Oh, sure. I mean, after all, the poor little guy had a tough afternoon. I just didn't have the heart to turn him down. Yeah, but he won't get enough sleep. Well, he may miss a few hours, but one or two nights of going to bed late and getting up early the next morning will cure him. Maybe you're right. What's the matter with the midget? Who? My little brother. Oh, your father gave him permission to stay up and watch the late movie. Oh, I wondered what he was so excited about. Practically knocked me over. You do it, too, the way I feel. Well, what's the matter, Dave? I don't know. I haven't been feeling too good lately. Oh, well, sit down and take a load off your feet. That's too bad, dear. You'll feel better after dinner, though. Sure. I was thinking of borrowing Georgie Dunkel's barbells. What are they supposed to do for you? Well, give me some extra muscles. I think you look fine with the ones you've got. I know, but I gotta get in shape. I was reading a magazine article the other day, and they said if you want to feel healthy and strong, you should definitely get some barbells. What magazine was that? It was called Barbells. <laughs> well, I think it's silly to do that kind of strenuous exercise. Oh, I don't think so. Not if he doesn't overdo it. And I think I'll get up real early in the morning with these exercises. Do a little road work, use the barbells. 
shadow box a little, do some setting up exercises. I'm exhausted already. Sounds like a good idea to me. You really think so, Pa? Yes, I do. Up early in the morning, plenty of good exercise and fresh air. Not enough people get exercise during the winter months. Yeah, I think I'll go over to Georgie's and get his barbells now. Well, be careful now. Oh, Harriet. Well, I mean it. Do you think it's wise to let him fool around with all this exercise business? Sounds pretty strenuous. <laughs> well, there's nothing to worry about. I'll tell you exactly what'll happen. He'll get up early a few mornings, do all that work and exercise, and believe me, in a day or two, he'll quit by himself. Do you really think so? Oh, sure. It's the same way with Ricky. The best thing to do is let the boys find out for themselves. Well, I'll let you handle the situation. Well, there's nothing to handle. Just let time take care of everything. The worst that can happen is we have a couple of tired boys on our hands. Oh, I think I'll take a little stroll downtown. Where are you going? Oh, I thought maybe I'd take a walk past the Bijou Theater. Oh, I saw those pictures yesterday. Nothing. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess I'll go out in the yard and, and uh, polish the car. <laughs> Oh, hi, Thorny. Well, what are you chuckling about? You know, anyone can polish a car. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with polishing a car. I, I was just kind of pleased with a little thing that happened at the house. You know, when you've got a couple of teenage boys, you've got to keep your wits about you all the time, or they'll put one over on old Dad. Oh, you telling me. I only have one, and I know. <laughs> uh, it's a funny thing. You see, the boys came up to me with a, a couple of rather unusual requests, and I'm sure they figured I was going to turn them down. But instead, I gave it the old surprise element. I, I went right along and told him, yes, fine. Wait a minute, Oz. You don't mean to tell me you raised our allowances. I thought we had a neighborhood no, agreement. No, no, no. <laughs> well, that far. Oh. <laughs> now, it seems that all of a sudden, Ricky has decided that he'd like to see how the older folks live and stay up late at night. At the same time, David wants to get up at the crack of dawn and work out with barbells and build up his muscles. <laughs> Sounds very confusing to me. No, no, not the way I worked it out. I just said, well, uh, go ahead, fellas. I figured after a couple of mornings of getting up early, David would find out how nice that warm bed can feel. And after staying up late a couple of nights, Ricky's going to realize that a guy can get pretty tired around midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're using the same ingenious method I'm using on my boy, Will. <laughs> oh, do you have a little problem with Will? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it little. You see, Will has set a task for himself. He's decided that he's going to be the very first one ever to read an entire set of encyclopedias. Holy smoke. Well, whoever gave him that idea? Well, not me, you can be assured. <laughs> but he's over there reading every single page. Well, at least it's educational. Yeah, that's what he says. In fact, he stopped doing homework and is concentrating entirely on the encyclopedias. He'll be quitting school next. Well, I don't see how you've solved your problem at all. Well, Oz, it's very simple. He's only on the first book, The A's. Airplanes and atom bombs and stuff. Wait till he gets to bacteriology and brassia pods and Brockmeyer's disease. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it, Thorny. I can see that you're a man of superior intelligence and genius when it comes to dealing with children. Well, thanks, Oz. I can see that you're a man of superior intelligence and genius. No. <laughs> in uh, dealing with children? No. In being able to see that I'm a man of superior intelligence and genius. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in again tomorrow night when our picture will be The Claw of the Vampire. What's that? Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. That apparently was our movie for tonight. Tomorrow night, our picture is, uh... Oh, thank you. The Claw of the Vampire clutches again. And so, till then, may all your dreams be pleasant dreams. Well, all the programs are over. Well, there was something on that one station. I saw it. No, no, no. That was just a test pattern. Aren't you afraid you might miss something? What is there to miss? Well, the test pattern might go off. <laughs> I don't think I'll wait around for all that excitement. I'll go get the checkerboard. No, wait a minute. What for? Well, if Mom's going to bed, you and I might as well play checkers. <laughs> Good night, all. Well, wait a minute.
Harriet. Don't make too much noise when you come up to bed. Here, Pop. I'll get them all set up. Uh, uh, Rick, are you, you sure we ought to uh, do this? It, it's awful late. Gee, Pop, you said I could stay up. Well, yeah, yes, I, I know. If you're going back on your word. No, <laughs> I'm going back on my word. I'll... I'll... with the barbells tomorrow morning. I'm kind of tired. This morning. Oh, come on, Pop. You'll feel fine once we start an exercise. Oh, yank the covers off me. Oh, come on, Pop. The morning air feels great. Well, not on my bare feet, it doesn't. Oh, come on, Pop. You promised. Uh, uh, okay. We, we, we better not lift the barbells in your room, though, David. You, your little brother was up awful late last night. We don't want to wake him up. Are you kidding? He helped me carry the barbells upstairs this morning. Oh, oh, well, I'll... Okay, go on your room. I'll be right there. Don't go back to sleep now, Pop. No. Yeah. so I can mark down all the television shows we could watch tonight. Oh, well, good for you. There's three owl movies on tonight. Yeah, good for the owls. <laughs> Let's get started with the barbell spot. Oh. Okay, Dave. There's one thing you should always remember in, in lifting barbells early in the morning. Uh, uh, Rick, you better listen to this, too. Always start in with smaller weights first, you see. So you, you, you don't get uh, muscle bound. Here are these uh, lighter ones here. Uh, better to start with. <laughs> I'm those look like toys. Try this one. It's only 60 pounds. 60 pounds? Dave, do you realize a man could get a, a nasty muscle wrench with 60 pounds? <laughs> I was reading in a magazine the other day where these guys are lifting over 300 pounds. Well, yes, but they're big, uh, fat uh, uh, Turkish and, and Egyptian guys. And, and well, I, I can lift it. Don't worry about that. This I gotta see. Pop, you were doing so good. Well, uh, I just uh, figured out a, a better way to, to get this off the ground. Uh, look, Ricky, you take that end. David, you take that end, and I'll lift in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm still a little uh, sleepy, uh, David. Uh, you get your muscles toned up first, and, and I'll uh, take it up later. I've uh, been uh, building myself up. Well, then why do you look so torn down? I'm <laughs> just a little sleepy, Mom. Oh, I've, I've just been up there doing a few exercises. The, uh... Oh, uh, uh, how do you feel, Rick? Oh, I feel fine. Oh. Where's David? He ate his breakfast long ago. He's outside doing some road work. Ozzie, would you like me to fix you? Ozzie? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? He's not getting any younger, you know. <laughs>
Honey, you're the greatest little hostess in town. Flattery will get you nowhere. There's work to be done. Oh, honey, I've got a big day tomorrow. Oh, honey, I got a big job tonight. Honey, I just got a great idea. Get a dish towel, too. How we can do these dishes in nothing flat. Oh, sounds interesting. All we need is that hot point automatic dishwasher we've been reading about. I can just imagine how easy this darned old job would be with a hot point dishwasher. Tell me about it, Jim. I pull out one of hot point's two separate sliding racks. The hot point dishwashers are easy to load when there's room for everything, even pots and pans. And up top, why well, you can put 31 cups and glasses in a hot point dishwasher. Then I add detergent. Turn the dial. And the job is done. All done? Certainly. And while you and I go to sleep, our hot point dishwasher double washes, double rinses, and dries every last thing in pure germ-free electric heat. Well, wake up. We don't have a hot point dishwasher now. Well, by George, we're going to have one tomorrow. I wonder how much they cost. Far less than you'd think, Jim. Over the years, owning and operating this hot point under counter model actually costs less than 10 cents a day more than doing dishes the hard way by hand. Give your home a gift this Christmas, a hot point dishwasher. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a very good picture. <clears throat> well, that's it. Oh, is there anything else on, Pa? No, that uh, movie does it. Well, should we hit the hay now, son? Oh, so early. Early? You kidding? It's 1.30. Aren't you tired? Oh, heck no. Let's listen to the radio. No, 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 no. I don't think there's anything on at this hour. Oh, sure there is. There's Baggy Eyes Bigelow, the all-night disc jockey. <laughs> No, no, thanks. Nodding Nelson, the weary weightlifter, just wants to get up to bed. Come on. down the garage for a little tune-up. Oh? How's everything at home? Oh, just fine. What about David? Is he still weightlifting? Yeah, he's up every morning lifting weights, but I don't think it's going to last much longer. Probably not. What about Ricky? Is he still burning the midnight oil? Oh, yeah, every night. But I have a hunch that's not going to last much longer either. He, he looked pretty tired this morning. How's your boy, Will? Still uh, struggling with the encyclopedias? Well, yes, but it's kind of a half-hearted effort now. He won't last much longer, either. 
You know, the psychology we're using on the boys really works wonders. Oh, it's, it's the only thing. Simply have to understand the adolescent mind. That's all. When the kids get these silly ideas, just string right along with them. Like Ricky with his staying up late at night and David uh, with his, his barbells. After all, how long can it last? Not much longer. Well, I hope not, because I can't either. <laughs> Maybe this intelligent approach works on your boy, Will, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to find something else for David and Ricky. Well, now that we're being honest about it, I must admit I've been getting a little discouraged, too. Really? Yes. Will doesn't seem to be getting tired of this encyclopedia project at all. Well, he's breezing right through volume two and says he can't wait till he starts volume three. <laughs> I guess we both have our problems. I think I figured out a method to use on Will, though. I'm simply going to tell him to stop reading the encyclopedia. Well, what reason are you going to give him? A very good one, Oz. He'll do what I say because I'm his father. It's the same approach my father used to use on me and his father used on him. And it seems to have stood the test of time very well. <laughs> about this weightlifting business. How much longer do you plan to keep it up? I don't know. I was wondering if this whole thing isn't just a big waste of time. Nobody at school seems to think I look any different. And I even wore a t-shirt, too. Oh, that's too bad. You think somebody'd say something? I've been working out for three days. Well, you look very muscular to me. Just right. You really think so? Yes, I do. Look, maybe now would be a good time to stop before you get so lumpy you can't wear any of your clothes. What are you looking for? A tape measure. You got one I could borrow? Oh, yeah. One over here in the top drawer. Thanks. I just want to take a few measurements, see if I gained anything. Oh, I'm sure that you have. Holy smokes, I've gained two inches in my chest. Well, that's fine. I wonder where my arms are. Holy smokes, I gained two inches in my arms, too. Let's see, that's two inches in three days, four inches in a week, 16 inches in a month. Gee, in two months, I'd have a 72-inch chest and 42-inch arms. Well, I'd suggest that you give up the weightlifting for a while. I'd hate to have to widen all the doorways in the house. Yeah, I guess so. To tell you the truth, I've been getting kind of tired of it anyway. In fact, I was tired of it right after the first day. Well, why didn't you give it up? Well, I was just sticking to it for Pop's sake. I'm afraid I don't understand that. Well, I noticed Pop was getting kind of tired and run down, so I thought this would be a good way to build him up. Oh, believe me, dear, there isn't a thing in the world wrong with your father that a few mornings in bed won't fix up. You sure he won't mind? I'm positive. Well, that's good. I think I'll take the barbells back to Georgie's right now. Thanks for the tape measure. On second thought, I think I'll have him come over here and pick him up. I don't want to get too muscle-bound. <laughs> Say, is there anything special you want me to do for you this afternoon? No, nothing that I can think of. If you give me a minute, I'm sure I can think of something. Oh, no, 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 don't bother. It's just I thought if you didn't have anything for me to do, I might take a little nap. A nap? Well, sure, it's the only way I can carry on with this mad life I've been leading. Up with Ricky every night looking at television and up at the crack of dawn with David pushing those barbells around. Oh, see, I think I got some news for you about the early morning weightlifting. Oh, what's that? David has decided to stop. You're kidding. No. Hope you aren't too disappointed. Oh, now you are kidding. Gee, I feel like I've just gotten a parole or something. Oh, well, I told you this had happened. Yes, I guess you did. Yeah, instead of arguing with David about the barbell business, I went right along with him. Now the situation has solved itself. So it seems. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pop. Well, you look a little bleary-eyed there, son. What's the matter? Oh, it's a big jib, boy. What's the big jib? Our car's gone. Well, yeah, I took it down the garage. Oh, it's a big jib, boy. Well, what's this all about? I didn't get to take my nap this afternoon. Your nap? Yeah, so I could stay up late tonight. <laughs> now, wait a minute, you mean to say you've been taking a nap every afternoon? Yes, sir, in the back seat of your car. <laughs> no wonder you've been able to stay up late at night without getting tired. Yeah, but I'm tired now. I think I'll go to bed early tonight. 
And you know what? What? It's a big jib, boy. <laughs> well, dear, I guess that gives you a perfect theory now. Yeah, but I sure knocked myself out proving it. But why don't you go upstairs and take a nap? No, no, I, I, I'm okay. You know, there's one good thing about this exercising. I bet I took off a couple of pounds. You probably have. Is there a tape measure in there? Uh-huh. May I borrow it? Certainly. Be my guest. just want to measure my waist. I wouldn't be surprised if I took a couple of inches off it. Hey, what the heck is this? Look, I've gained two inches around the waist. No, you haven't. Well, yes, I have. Look at the tape measure. Now, you take a look at it. That's a very special tape measure. It was designed by a young weightlifter's mother. I don't get it. I got the first two inches off of it. <laughs> Would you say this had anything to do with David stopping his weightlifting? Well, maybe a little. I had to do something. I was afraid the weightlifting was getting to be too much. Yeah, I, I guess it was pretty tough on poor Dave. It wasn't so easy on poor Dave's father, either. <laughs> you know something? You can say that again. What's that? Never mind. I, I'm too tired to say it again. <laughs> Oh, boy. Donuts. Fresh, warm, golden brown donuts. Just like our grandmothers used to make after hours of preparation. But how different today with a modern hot point push-button range like Harriet Nelson's? Look. Her hot point has a French fryer built right in. The same type of high-speed hot point fryer professional chefs use. No wonder Harriet can make donuts so crisp, light, and tender. Wouldn't you like to be famous, too, for deep-fried treats? Then ask your Hot Point dealer to show you the new Hot Point push-button range with built-in French fryer. And now, uh, pardon me, please. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I had plenty for dinner. I just wanted to come down and tell you, I think I'm going to turn in early tonight. I, I'm, I'm pretty tired. I didn't want to disappear and have you wonder where I went. Well, that's a good idea. Was this tonight's paper? Uh-huh. Hey, how about this? They're going to start televising the fights in the West Side Arena tonight. See that... Oh, no, the main event doesn't go on until about 10 or 10.15, usually. Sure, I'm so tired. I'd like to see that. Oh, gee. An awfully good late movie. This, this is a, a wonderful picture. I, I, I've seen it three times. Really excellent. I'll be right back. It, well, where are you going? I'm going to go upstairs and get some pillows in your electric blanket and throw it in front of the television set for you. <laughs> Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky, will be brought to you by Antizyme, the new toothpaste that gives you all-day immunity to tooth decay acid. Well, good night, folks. We'll see you again next week. Good night. And remember, always look to Hot Point for the finest first. Yes, sir. That's what I always say, boy. What do you always say, little man? Always look to Hot Point. For the finest, first. The part of the television announcer was played by Jack Wagner. This is Vern Smith speaking. Don't forget that a completely different episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet is heard every Friday night on radio. Consult your newspaper for time and radio stations.